Hi everyone, welcome here. I am so excited to share my February wrap up. I had such a good reading month. I really enjoyed most of the books that I read this month and I just love filming wrap ups. I love talking about the books that I've read and that I like and giving my reviews. So I'm going to write all of these books down below. I'm also going to link them on Amazon if you want to check them out there and I will link any corresponding videos. I did do quite a few vlogs this month so if you want to see any more thoughts of these books that I read I will link the vlogs down below and anything else that I may have mentioned I'll try to put links and just different information in the description so check there. And I read quite a few different genres this month too so I'm kind of going to talk about these books in genre order. So not in the order that I read them, but just genres. So first of all, we'll start with contemporary romance. The first contemporary romance book that I read was Memory Lane by Becky Wade. I actually reread this. I listened to the audiobook and I also read it along with the audiobook. So that was really fun. And I really enjoyed my second time reading this. I think the audiobook really helped my experience in this book. I just loved the way the narrators brought the characters to life for me and I was able to relate to the main girl character Remy. Um, I wasn't super her biggest fan <laughs> last time that I read this but this time I just felt endeared to her sooner than I did last year so that was a really nice change for me. Um, this is still a solid four star book for me but I really enjoyed it and so I read it and listened to it in anticipation of reading Rocky Road and I do have a vlog reading this book so if you want to see more thoughts. But Rocky Road, so I ended up giving this four stars as well and this was interesting. So the brother of the main character in this book is the star in Rocky Road and so his name is Jude. I loved his character in Memory Lane so I was very excited to read his story. This is a fake dating story and it's also like a law enforcement because Jude is an FBI officer and it's a little bit opposites attract as well. And the main premise of this book is there is a bad guy that the FBI is trying to bust and they end up getting his cousin, which is the girl, to fake date Jude so that they could infiltrate this cousin and try to catch him doing something illegal. Um, so they're fake dating to kind of trick him into doing something illegal. And there's definitely a lot of cute moments in this book. There was really strong faith content. I felt like the faith content was stronger than in Memory Lane, so I really liked that change. Um, a little bit, the romance did fall flat for me though. I didn't quite see a connection between the two characters. It just felt forced and awkward and I didn't really get one over, so that was too bad. But again, loved the faith content. I still liked the characters themselves. They were very well fleshed out and I, I could see how there was a lot going on to make them more well-rounded. We got to see a lot of backstory from the girl's family and their business and stuff like that so that was kind of like a little side story and side mystery going on. One thing that was like a little bit annoying that I feel like could have been cut out is just the fact that the main girl, I kind of, I forget her name, which is, what is her name? Gemma? Gemma. I think it's Gemma. Anyways, she has a boyfriend at the beginning and that's kind of how they're able to trick the cousin because the cousin knows she has a boyfriend so they pretend Jude is the boyfriend even though he's not and she currently still has a boyfriend. So why? Why do we have to do that? You know, like it could have been as simple as like, oh, she has a new boyfriend and let make it work. She didn't stay with her boyfriend very long. She did break it off with him when she realized she had feelings for Jude but still I felt like... Eh, I guess maybe it felt a little unrealistic, like why would the FBI even think that's a good idea to like make Jude pretend to be this person, this boyfriend when, I don't know. So whatever. So again, it was the romance that kind of was like, eh, I'm not on board with this, but that's okay. For the rest of the book, I did really like it and I was really thankful to read this book early. So thank you, Becky Wade, and still would recommend this series. Definitely want to read the third book. It follows the third brother super excited about his story because again she gave us little crumbs of his character in Rocky Road and I definitely want to see more about him so we shall see next year. Okay I'm in a romantic suspense mood. I've been reading quite a few romantic suspense and you guys like there's some good ones out there. I'm gonna do a recommendation video actually because you might know like I'm kind of harsh on romantic suspense. It has to have like solid romance and like really strong characters for me to like it. It's not just like the thrill and like the crime and the mystery that keeps me interested. It's more so the characters and the relationships. And I've been reading quite a few that have that great in it. So um, same video as Rocky Road. I did read the book Never Miss by, by Melissa Coslin, And I loved this book. 
five stars, you guys. So very similar writing style to Dangerous Beauty. So if you like Dangerous Beauty, I'll show you right here. Here it is. So this is Dangerous Beauty. It was a favorite book from 2023. Never miss. It's going to be a favorite book for 2024, for sure. I love her writing. I just love it. I love her characters. And she takes on like giant plots and somehow she makes it work, which is so impressive. So for Never Miss, it is kind of about like a virus story, but you're more so following the characters themselves. The plot doesn't take over, which I really like. I find with Romantic Suspense, if the plot takes over, I'm like bored. I want to see character work, okay? Romance, characters, okay? So this one had it so good. So if you like that kind of thing, I feel like you'll like this book. Pretty much this girl, she's a former CIA sniper and she ends up saving this guy and he's like a really smart like PhD doctor guy and so they end up working together to stop the spread of this virus and there's bad guys that they're running from and chasing and it's so interesting. It was so well done. Their romance though, <sighs> unmatched loved it. So yeah, really enjoyed that. And romantic suspense that I like. Super good. Super good faith content. And overall, loved it. So I also read Targeted, which is a novella collection. And it has Lynette Eason, Lynn Blackburn, and Natalie Walters in it. And I got this book for, for Christmas. So I was finally able to read it now. I love novella collections because they are such a good sampling of an author's writing. And I had read Lynette Eason before, but never Lynn Blackburn or Natalie Walters. And I ended up loving Lynn Blackburn's story the most, enough that I picked up more of her books. So these novellas, they actually do follow series that these authors have written, but I didn't feel like I missed anything. The characters are like, their themselves you get enough backstory where it's not like you don't know what's going on so they have their own plots in them and of course they're very fast paced because it's short so they have to make it fit and yeah I liked Lynn Blackburn's the most because again character work loved it so to be honest I found Lynna Eason's super boring <laughs> I think I gave it three stars but you know I definitely skimmed it so it's like two stars Lynn Blackburn's I would give a solid four like if it was a full book I would have loved it and then Natalie Walters for some reason it, I forget everything about it so that's too bad but Lynn Blackburn okay because so I'm typing that up because I then read a full-length book by Lynn Blackburn and loved it so surprised okay so this is Unknown Threat Lynn Blackburn first book in Defend and Protect so this is a trilogy and I just on a whim started this book because I'm like, I like her writing. She writes good characters, romance. Okay. And that's what I got from this book. It kept me hooked. I got attached to the characters right away and there was romance right away. So I was happy about that. So this follows Secret Service dudes and an FBI girl. So the Secret Service, they are starting to get attacked and there's been a couple murders within this one place in Raleigh, I think. Raleigh, is that how you say the name? And enough deaths have happened that the FBI gets called in to try to do some murder investigation because something's going wrong with the Secret Service. They need help. So this top FBI agent woman gets assigned to it. And right away, the Secret Service are angry at the FBI because they haven't been treating them very well. So there's a lot of tension. But the tension made it good. It wasn't just like, oh, I hate you. It was like, oh, you're actually really good at your job, but like, I thought I didn't like the FBI. So there's that really like romantic tension, okay? And truly, like, I just feel like the characters were so well fl fleshed out and the side characters were so good. Like, it wasn't just like they were one dimensional. Like, you really got to know the side characters. This whole team was really strong. I enjoyed reading about them. There was also solid faith content. They were praying and it just had every single element in the right amount for me to love it. So I gave it five stars. I'm definitely going to keep reading this trilogy. I have the other two on my fe uh, February, March TBR. So yeah, if you like similar books that I like, if you like Romantic Suspense, if you like Submerged by Daddy Petri, similar vibes for this book. So still like a plot that is interesting that I want to know about. I want to know the mystery, who's killing these people. 
but it's about the characters and their relationships. Once again, my favorite thing. So yeah, highly recommend and what a good find. I'm really excited. Okay, then I read just a secular thriller and it's the only one left. So this was for my thriller video that I filmed where I read The Housemaid, Drowning, and The Only One Left. So I finished this one in February though. I give it two stars. I just... I, I don't know. I didn't like the story, to be honest. So it had Riley Sager's like kind of classic writing where it's easy to read. But I, I will say like right away, I was turned off by it because they used the F word in a context that like really grossed me out. So that was such a turnoff. And they did it a couple times, like within the few, first few chapters. So I was like, uh, I don't want to read this, you know? The thing is, I've heard such amazing things about this book in particular with the amount of twists that are in it. And I like a good twist. I like a twist where I like don't see it coming. But for me, I think the way the whole mystery played out, none of the characters were likable, first of all. And I didn't find that I was rooting for the characters. And I think within a thriller, I do have to root for them at some point for me to care what's happening. And I just didn't. So I didn't care what the answer was. I felt like the main girl was just dumb. Like she, I don't know, like I didn't agree with her choices and I don't like it when I, once again, like I wasn't rooting for her cause she was just so dumb with her decisions. And then the twists, like th I feel like the first twist would have been great and maybe like one more, but there was so many in the sense of like, who's connected to who, like, Every character in this book, almost every character, had a twist associated with them that just felt like out of pocket and just like ridiculous that I was like, what? It just, it was too much. So, but I know a lot of people love it for that reason. So I could be the odd one out there. I, I don't know. I'm on the fence with Riley Sager. You guys know I hated The House Across the Lake and I still, that's still my most hated book by him. But the only one left is a close second for most hated, like, because I just didn't like anything about it, to be honest. So I don't know, two that I liked, two that I didn't. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue with his books, but anyways, so I'm glad that I know now. And again, I know there's so much hype for this book and a lot of people love the twist. So you guys might like it, but yeah, it wasn't for me. Okay. And then you guys would have seen this video most recently, but I did do a vlog reading some Christian fiction favorites. And they were all like historical based. So here we go. Historical fiction is up next. And this one is the most fun because When the Day Comes by Gab Gabrielle Meyer was incredibly hyped last year. Or maybe, I don't know when it came out. Did it come out in 2022? Oh, it came out in 2022. Okay. But then the second book came out last year. I don't know why. Wh whatever. <laughs> Okay. When I first heard about this book, I knew that it was dual timeline. So right away, I wasn't interested because you can tell that they're both historical just based on the pictures. But you guys, like you saw my reactions in that vlog. First of all, the writing was very interesting. It wasn't boring. However, within both timelines, there were just like descriptions of what she was doing and what was going on that I was just like, eh, I don't care, skimmed it. I cared about how she was going to end up picking which timeline to stay in. And I was invested in that. And then some of the characters like Henry made me so mad throughout the book. And then really the, the other guy in the other timeline also made me extremely mad. Same with one of the moms. Like there were some infuriating characters, which I guess maybe shows good writing. But if you guys don't know, this follows a premise where there's this lineage of women who live in two different timelines every single day until they're 21 and then they have to pick a timeline to stay in. You follow this girl named Libby. She lives in 1774 and 1914, I'm pretty sure. And so every single day she wakes up in one or the other. She has a complete separate family in each and she does completely different things in each but she keeps her memories from both and so when she's 21 she's supposed to pick and she already knows which timeline she wants to pick because she likes a boy in one of them and she has no prospects in the other one so she's happy to stay in one of them but there's issues that arise in both and that was so interesting it was so well told and seriously there was like, I would, there was a couple like kind of twisty moments throughout where I was like, 
what? That is good. Like, I didn't have any predictions, but I definitely was invested. I wanted to know what was happening and I thought it was well done. Okay, so there is really strong faith content in this book too. I think that brought it up for me. And then I will say one trigger warning is there is a marital sexual assault in this book twice and it is like totally fade to black and only her emotions are described but it is there so just be aware but I didn't feel like it took away from the story. I think it almost like humanized Libby and just showed like her true self and her true emotions and showed how torn she would have been in both timelines for like what how this happened so yeah I, I still thought it was really well done I gave this four stars I would recommend it and I'm happy that I read it so that was a really fun experience so I did also read the huntress hun I can't say this word the huntress of Thornbeck Forest by Melanie Dickerson and this was a DNF I was not that interested it's was kind of young feeling, very kind of like shallow writing, not in a bad way, but just like not what I like to read. Plus, you know, the setting and everything, it's very medieval. You follow this girl who's kind of like a Robin Hood retelling character where she poaches on the king's land and like gives to the poor, but it's illegal to poach on the king's land. And the boy she's starting to like is the new like enforcer. So she's keeping a secret from him that he, she's the one who's been poaching and he's trying to catch who's been poaching. So that's awkward. And I didn't read how it ended. I don't know how it ends, but like, I didn't care. So that's why I just DNF'd it. Um, I just, I just wasn't engaged. And I was like, and eh, I don't need to push through. So now I know, but I would still recommend it. There was like fairly good faith content. They went to church and everything and they talked about like how to have morals and like this girl felt bad that she was poaching, but she's like, but I'm doing a good thing, but I'm also poaching, so which is right? And the romance that was there was pretty cute, but I just wasn't invested, so. And then lastly, I read The Hope of Azure Springs in that video and this was four stars. I liked it. It took me about 100 pages to get into it though. I felt myself kind of bored the first 100 pages. Just, I don't know, I think not enough was happening and I didn't feel like I knew the characters yet. But then like a switch happened and I started seeing the buds of like friendship and romance and you started to see how this girl is growing in herself and I came to really love a lot of the characters. So that like really pushed it up to a four for me. Um, this book follows a girl, it kind of opens with an intense scene where um, this girl was shot and she's rescued by these guys and taken to the town of Azure Springs. And she's kind of nursed back to health by this family. And then the sheriff of the town is her love interest and he is trying to solve what happened because um, there is also a murder attached to her injury. So they're trying to figure that out. And then you also watch her like figure out her life and get into this town. Um, she's an orphan, so she doesn't really know much about her family. She's She lost her sister and she is intending to find her. So that's kind of her goal. But yeah, you just see her like grow in herself. Um, she is described as being like kind of plain and not an attractive woman. So they do talk a lot about like how no one's gonna love her cause she's not beautiful. Um, so that was sad, but it was also like spun in a way where it was like, looks don't matter, it's about your heart. So I thought that was a good message. And yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I'm glad that I read it. And her writing just is so easy to read. It's really fun. I've been sitting on my foot this whole time. And so it's in pain now. I've got two more books to talk about. So I'm going to be a little bit lower now, but hopefully that's okay. So next I'll talk about Mary Poppins. <laughs> I read Mary Poppins. I listened to the audiobook, and I mentioned this, I think in my March TBR, that this is such a nostalgic story for me. I didn't ever read the books growing up, but I did watch the movie with Julie Andrews and I remember just loving it. And the book is similar to the movie, but like not exactly. There's a lot of characters I didn't recognize and a few things that happen in the movie don't happen in the book. And I forgot how sassy Mary Poppins is. Her attitude was like, okay, like 
I think if I because I knew her personality from the movie I was able to kind of overlook but if I had just like started Mary Poppins without knowing anything about it I would have, would have been like she's way too sassy for me I don't like her attitude but it was still like very kind of fun and whimsical and it, it was so fun a lot of like kind of magical realism in there I enjoyed myself reading it I gave it three stars it's good glad I read it lastly I did finish the return of the prodigal son by Henry Nguyen and this book blew me away. I think I mentioned it briefly in my Read in the New Year blog because that's when I started it. I started it in January and it started out boring for me because the author was just talking about this painting that he saw and how it like really spoke to him and he kind of told a story of like his journey of seeing this painting and how it impacted him but then he like actually went into like the theological breakdown of a prodigal son painting. So this is the painting. It's also on the front of the book. And he talks about how it is a like a depiction of the prodigal son story in the Bible. And so he talks about each character within the painting and what they represent. And the way he talked, it was incredible, like so deep, so like heart touching, heartwarming. I was so encouraged. I I loved it. I truly loved it. I think I gave it four stars, but it's like, it has five star elements in it because like I was so blown away by some of the stuff that he said and it went by really fast once I got to those parts. So really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend this book. And yeah, I mean, I actually used a pen and was like underlining stuff because like, what's a good example? Like just, you know, all the stuff. So good. Um, Yeah, there's some pictures in it too. So that was great. I'm glad that I read it and it's a nonfiction off my TBR, so yay. Okay, and then really quick, I did read a tiny little novella by Marie Soleil and it's called Cookies and Kisses, I think, or Kisses and Cookies, one of those. Um, super short novella and it was free on her website or something for a while or maybe it's still free. I'll link her stuff down below if I can find it. But basically, it's just a short little novella. This girl gets a job to be Guy's baking assistant. He owns a bakery, but he doesn't want help. But his mom is like, you need help. So she hires this girl. And it's a little bit like enemies to lovers, I guess, because the guy's really skeptical of her. And he like puts her through this, these weird tests and stuff to see if she like knows baking like she says she does. And they both are like physically attracted to each other right away. Um, it was good. Like solid, I guess. I think I would give it four stars because like there was nothing wrong with it it was just extremely short and I liked what I saw I think the writing is good I do like this author's writing and her books every book that I've read has been pretty good so yeah I would recommend it it's probably on Kindle Unlimited so you can check it out there all right guys that is it thank you for watching this wrap up again I love talking about these books it was so fun. So again, I'll link everything down below and let me know what you read in February. What was your favorite book? Have you read any of these books? Are any of these books now on your TBR? Let me know and thank you for being here. I really appreciate it and I just love sharing books. <laughs> so have a good day you guys. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.